This is a visual history of the 1940s, 50s, and 60s in the United States. In 1940, the National Federation for the Blind was formed to promote inclusion of the blind and visually impaired. They have a distinctive logo, and their original motto stated, You can live the life you want, blindness is not what holds you back. The next year, in 1941, the United States formally entered World War II. The U.S. was involved in World War II for four years, during which over 600,000 wounded veteran soldiers returned to the U.S., requiring health care and rehabilitation services. Care for veterans, although deficient in many ways, was a major driver in moving forward the fields of therapy. In 1946, President Truman signed the National Mental Health Act, which established the mental health care of citizens in the U.S. as a federal priority for the government. By 1947, the Paralyzed Veterans of America organization was already providing services to encourage and assist the recovery and transition of significantly disabled veterans. The programs included benefits, supported employment, and advocacy. In 1948, the World Health Organization was first formed in Geneva, Switzerland by the newly created United Nations. In 1950, Thorazine, the first ever antipsychotic drug, was approved by the FDA. This drug is often credited as a catalyst for the deinstitutionalization movement, as it quieted the public sphere of the, quote, mentally insane, unquote, being a part of society. Deinstitutionalization, which was the process of replacing long-term psychiatric hospitals and institutions with less isolated community health services began in 1950. In addition to increased use of antipsychotic drugs, this time period also saw an increased public awareness of the low quality of care in these large institutions. In 1951, the first edition of the DSM created a standard criteria for the diagnosis of mental illness. This was followed in 1953 by the American Psychological Association's Ethical Standards document. 1954 saw the start of the Civil Rights Movement, which relied on mass mobilization, nonviolent resistance, and civil disobedience as mechanisms for social change. A main tenet of the movement was desegregation, which allowed for greater inclusion of African American citizens in every aspect of American life. This included walkouts, sit-ins, and Rosa Parks' famous ride on the bus where she refused to take a seat in the back. Simultaneous to the civil rights movement, the war in Vietnam raged in Southeast Asia. The war provoked anti-war activism in the U.S. and also increased visibility of the psychological impacts of war observed in returning veterans. The number of people who served and the conscription that went into their service led to a high rate of PTSD, with many, many soldiers returning with psychological wounds that required health care the same way that physical wounds do. In 1963, President Kennedy signed the Community Mental Health Act, which provided federal funding for community mental health centers, contributing further to deinstitutionalization. In 1965, the civil rights movement culminated in the passing of the Voting Rights Act. This year also saw the creation of Medicare, which provided health insurance to Americans over 65, regardless of income or disability. While women's rights issues were intertwined with other civil rights movements of this time, the rise in popularity of De Beauvoir's The Second Sex in 1968 contributed to the establishment of feminism as a movement. During this time period, women had legally had the right to vote for less than 50 years and made up far less than 10% of the U.S. Congress. At the end of this era, the United States first landed on the moon, an achievement which marks technological advancement and organizational success that the government showed in putting together such a feat. General trends of the 1940s, 50s, and 60s show a shift away 
from exclusion and a shift towards policies in a society of inclusion.